If you're asking yourself if I would raise winter pigs again, the answer is good morning, modern steaders. It's a nice rainy day this morning. Gotta love it. 36 degrees out in rain. We have a ton of snow still. And now we're getting a lot of ice. Man, it's so much fun. All right, let's get on topic with today's video. We've been getting a ton of questions lately. I'm just watching where I'm walking, making sure I'm not going to slip. Mr. Biggs and fall. It's pretty treacherous out here this morning. Get over in the snow. We've been, whoa! We've been getting a ton of questions about raising pigs in the winter time lately. So today I'm gonna share with you the lessons I've learned from raising our pigs in the winter. Let's start right here as we're walking into the pigs. Believe it or not, this wire was up to my knee at least, if not above it, and there's another wire down below. So next winter when we raise pigs, I'm gonna have three strands, if not four strands high. So that way, I'll have one here, and I might go one even this high. The reason for that is I have two strands right now. One's buried in the snow, which is fine. I figured that would happen. But the second one, which is right there, is the snow is up to it. And even when the snow wasn't up to it, it wasn't high enough to keep the pigs out, especially in this corner for some reason. They'd come running around in that pen. They'd have so much speed. When they got over to this corner, they would just step right over it and walk off. Doop -doo -doop. And that's not good. I never liked seeing the pigs out of the pasture area. Luckily, having that pen was amazing. By us having that pen, I'd go over there, shake some food. The pigs knew that that was their safe home spot and they'd just walk right over to the pen. I could lock them in it and it'd take about five minutes. So it worked awesome. So if you're raising your pigs in the winter time and if you get snow, Make sure your fence is a little bit higher than it is in the summer. We've gotten a lot of snow this year, so if we didn't get as much snow, it would have been fine. But you never know how much snow you're gonna get until you get it. So you're, you're better off being safe than sorry. The other thing too is, is the pigs haven't been out in the pasture area because of the fence, but even if it wasn't for the fence, it's been so icy, I don't think I would have let them out here anyways. And the reason for that is, is I don't want them running around because they get going pretty fast when they run. I don't want, wouldn't want them running around sliding and breaking a leg or something. So I might in the future make the pen a little bit bigger. So let's talk about the pen. Our pen is made out of four cattle panels. Each of them are 16 feet long. So it's 16 feet by 16 feet. This cattle panel I cut down and the section I cut out of it is what I made my gate with. Come on in. And it's worked out really well. That gate holds up nicely. It's made out of that piece of cattle panel and four pieces, no, eight pieces of one by four pine. Very simple to make and came out nice. And then I got some gate hinges on it. The pen itself is just made out of two four by four posts for the gate. And then we have our T-post for the rest of it. And it works out awesome because every time I move my pigs to a different area, it comes down easy. The only thing I gotta do is I gotta dig two holes for our four by four posts. But then the T-post, you just bang in with a hammer and you have a nice portable pen that's easy to move. Another thing I never thought about, I guess I can't say I never thought about it because I had the thought in my mind, but the gate, is it's not completely frozen in the ground but i can't swing it open all the way because there's so much snow and ice build up it's about four to six inches off the ground normally but right now it's flush so i'd have to think of something for next winter some way to be able to raise that gate in the winter because if you raise it in the springtime the pigs are small enough to get under it and you don't want that so it's kind of how do you get everything to work for you in the different seasons? So that's another thing I'm gonna be thinking about over the, this next growing season before we do winter piglets again is how to do a gate that'll work and I can raise it up if we get a lot of snow and ice. One thing we did, which worked out awesome, 
is when we were buying our piglets is we made sure we got them a little bit bigger than we would than in the springtime. Normally in the springtime, your piglets are gonna be around 30 to 35 pounds. These guys were, I'd say, around 50 to 80 pounds when we got them, so we made sure they were a little bit bigger, so that way, when the cold weather came, they were already good size, and we didn't have to worry about the cold affecting them, and which worked out perfect for our advantage. Good morning. For us, even though we got our piglets this fall and they were bigger than normal, we still paid $50 less per piglet than we do in the springtime. The other thing I want to talk about is the breed of pig. These are heritage breeds. They're a cross between Hampshires and quite a few other breeds that the farmer likes to mix in for a couple of his own personal reasons. I'm not gonna sit here and say one breed is better than another breed. You gotta get this kind of breed because I don't believe that's true. I believe there's different breeds for different areas and there's different breeds for different kinds of meat that you like to get. These pigs are very long, so they're gonna have a long belly and that means more bacon. So I like this breed. I like the way the farmer's breeding them so we can get more bacon. But the one thing I would not do for winter pigs is I would not get regular pink pigs because they are not very hairy and raising pigs in the winter you want them to be hairy because that's what's going to keep them warm they'll actually grow more hair and get on a winter coat just like any other animal and they can keep themselves nice and warm throughout the winter huh girls i installed a hot water and a cold water hose faucet on the outside of the house. If you watch our videos, you see us using it all the time. We installed that before the pig harvesting class came. If you haven't seen the videos for our pig harvesting class, I'll put a link to that playlist right here. But so that way we could have hot water out to the outdoor kitchen for sanitary reasons. But I'll tell you what, it has been working amazingly to give these animals warm water whenever they need some water. Because I don't know about you, but I love a warm cup of coffee or a hot cup of hot chocolate when it's cold outside. And for me, the way I think about it is my animals are going to love waking up to a nice thing of hot, warm water. Every time we give our animals water in the wintertime, it's warm water. It's not boiling hot but it's warm so they can drink it, they can enjoy it, and that'll help warm up their whole core temperature, what is good, which is good for them. That's one thing we do for our pigs and all of our animals in the wintertime that really benefits them. The other thing is, is you wanna make sure you have a good shelter. The thing with the shelter is, you wanna be able to make sure that they can get in and out of the wind, but have enough room to stay warm and go in there and not just be squished. So for us, we have the IBC tote, so when they're smaller, and then when it's really cold, they can both go in the IBC tote that's loaded with hay and cuddle up and stay warm. But say today it's not very nice out and it's rainy, and they don't wanna be squished or be on top of each other to stay warm, they have a bigger mudroom area to go in and just sit on their front porch and look out and enjoy the weather. And they use that all the time, which works out perfect. We give them hay for bedding. I choose hay over straw because inside the hay there is the grass that they can eat because pigs eat grass and they love it. There's seeds in the hay. They're going to pick through that. They're going to eat the seeds. They're going to eat the good pots of the hay for the grass and enjoy it. And the rest of it they'll use for bedding. They pick it up. They move it around. They play with it. And they make a nice bed for themselves. And they enjoy it. So in the winter time, make sure you have a good supply of hay because they're going to need plenty of hay for eating, for playing, and for bedding. They're going to go through a little bit more grain in the winter time for a few reasons. In the winter time, they're going to be eating more to stay warm. They're going to be eating more because they're bored. And they're going to be eating more because they're not on pasture. Even if they were out here, there's nothing else for them to eat. But in the springtime, summer and fall there is grass growing there's leaves falling they can dig in the dirt eat grubs and worms there's apples falling off the trees for them to eat 
and it just gives them something to do. So this time of the year, there's less for them to do. And right now they're starting to get cabin fever. We have an outdoor feeder for them, which they're a little bit more rough on this time of the year because they're bored and they're looking for stuff to do. But having the feeder works perfectly because that way I don't have to come out here and feed them all the time. When they're bored or they're hungry, they're cold and they want to get warm, there's always grain in the feeder for them. And one of the good things for us about raising pigs in the winter time is we have plenty of poo and we're going to have plenty of hay to turn into a compost pile and make beautiful compost for our gardens this year. Yeah, thank you pigs. You're going to give us bacon, pork chops, ham, and beautiful manure to grow our garden with. And the pigs, they keep it all in one spot. That's probably two feet high and frozen. With raising pigs in the winter, you don't have to worry about the smell. It freezes, whether it freezes or not in your area, it's gonna be cold and there's not gonna be a smell. So if you're worried about raising pigs because you don't want to deal with the smell, I never found that they do smell. As long as you keep them clean, you give them a wet, muddy spot to wallow in, but don't make it a huge, messy mud hole. That's what really gets stinky. But in the winter time, you don't need to worry about that. So it works out perfect if that's one of your concerns. If you're asking yourself if I would raise winter pigs again, the answer is yes, I would. Raising winter pigs has been awesome. It keeps me in shape throughout the winter. Gives me plenty of things to do in the winter time to come outside, to look forward to, to enjoy. Keep, just keeps me motivated, keeps me going. It's been a great winter having the pigs. Even though this has been one of the coldest winters in many, many years and snowiest winters, I'm still glad I raised the pigs this year. But we had a couple of good lessons learned and we learned from our failures or our mistakes and we're gonna grow and we're gonna do that much better next year and it's gonna be that much more fun. So the biggest one is with the fence. Make sure I have another one to two strands up on that fence. And think about this year, a different style gate. So what I'm thinking in my head for a gate, let me talk about that. I kind of already have an idea. I just don't know how durable it will be. So I'm thinking about taking a piece of cattle panel, cutting it to fit my doorway here, keep it on the inside so it's gonna overlap and hit here, and that way I can open it and pull it in, but when I need to, I can just keep raising it up and using like a staple hinge to make it easy to move. But my only thought with that is, is I don't know if it's strong enough to keep the pigs, like if the pigs wanted to push in on the center, if they could pop it and get out. So I don't know if the gate's strong enough. Some couple of things I'll have to work on and keep thinking about throughout this summer. But we'll get it figured out and it's been a great experience. I'm happy we did it. If you want to, if you want to raise pigs in the wintertime, I say go for it. It's not been that much harder. It hasn't been hard at all compared to raising them in the summertime. The only difference is, is there's not as much stuff for them to eat. Snow is falling off New York City. Supposed to be in the 60s here tomorrow. Crazy weather. I don't think I've been in the outdoor kitchen yet when it's raining out since we've had it insulated. I wonder how the sound comes across. Let's see. Can you guys hear anything? You can hear a little bit of rain dropping, but it's not loud. So that's good to know. We'll be able to shoot videos in here even when it's raining out. Yeah, I know. I still got to put a hatch on my hatch. Man. But when it's raining out, we can still film in here. It's not that loud. I believe what we are hearing is we're hearing the rain hit the outhouse roof. I don't think we're not hearing it hit this roof. That's good to know. Here's the hornet's nest, or what did I decide this was? This is a paper wasp nest. That's what I'm pretty sure it is. Leave it in the comments down below and tell me what kind of nest you think this is. And we need to figure out what we're gonna do with it. We're we gonna cut it up and see what's inside, or 
what? Thanks for coming along on our journey with us today. If you have any other questions about how we raise our pigs in the winter time or the lessons we learned, leave it in the comments down below. If you're new to our channel, thanks for stopping over. If you're not subscribed, now's a perfect opportunity for you to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications while you're there. And maybe, maybe not, YouTube will notify you and let you know every time we upload a video, go live, or post something to our community tab. The best way to stay up to date with us is going over to lumnaacres.com. I'll put a link right here. Sign up for our newsletter. And remember, we post a video every day at 6 a.m. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Mm -hmm.